everybody. So, um, <laughs> we are going to talk today about affliction versus sin. And this is something that occurred to me right after I finished recording um, the last video I did on spiritual spouses and all that. Um, but I had a conversation with someone today that helped me kind of get some clarity. Um, and it seems that this year the Lord is kind of bringing up, you know, how God will kind of address things and bring up certain themes and whatever. And so I'm probably going to use examples from my own life like I always do, but you got to have examples to have a th good thorough teaching. So, um, so let's start off with the definitions of affliction and sin, okay? So affliction is something that causes pain or suffering, which for our purposes as Christians, I don't think that's a thorough enough uh, definition, but I'm going to add lib here. So for Christians, when we're talking about demons, spiritual matters, the definition that I would put for an afflicting spirit, a demon that is afflicting you, is, you know, that's completely external. It's outside of you. It's coming. It, it's attacking you, right? It's a coming. It's coming against you. It's coming at you. Um, and that's just what the devil does, right? That's just what, what the enemy does is, it, you know, the, the devil's always trying to get us to sin and if we go to the definition of sin, um, that really does kind of cover it all. So let's let's jump to the definition of sin. Um, so let's go to Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Now, the full verse of 23, the context of, of the whole passage here is that uh, Paul is talking about, you know, whether or not to eat certain things and blah, blah, blah. I'm not touching on that in this video. That's a whole thing in itself. But there is still a truth here at the end of this verse, the end of this sentence, and it says, whatever is not from faith is sin. And I think the NIV says anything not rooted in faith. I don't know where my Bible is. Anyway, um, so anything not rooted in faith is sin. I remember the first time that that really, like, hit me. It was a good seven, eight years ago when I was living in Georgia. Um, like, if you really contemplate that, it's... Like, that. that is the most, like, succinct definition, but yet it has so much depth to it, okay? Anything that is not rooted in faith is sin, okay? And what's implied here is faith in God, right? Faith in Christ. And if we break down faith, which I'm pretty sure I've done on this channel before, really it means that you're trusting God, right? And when you are fully trusting God, when you're fully walking in faith, operating in faith, you're obeying God. Because if you unpack obedience, that's, that's what obedience is. It's having faith, trusting God, okay? So, going back to the definition of affliction, or afflicting spirits, afflicting demons, um, they're always trying to get us to do things that are not rooted in faith, right? Sin, okay? So, this really isn't any newsflash, right? Or at least it shouldn't be for people who've been saved for any amount of time, um, any substantial amount of time. Um, but here's what the Lord was kind of punctuating with me. And yeah, this may seem redundant, but again, this may help somebody out there. And if it, you, uh, even if it only helps one person, then I'm serving my purpose. So, you know, all of us have head knowledge. We have a lot of knowledge and information in our intellect, right? Or that we take in through our intellect. And, you know, in, in Christianity, we talk about how the farthest distance or the most difficult distance is from your head to your heart, right? Um, and that really is what happens as you evolve and you mature as a Christian is like more and more stuff 
shifts from your intellect to your heart in terms of knowing it, comprehending it, really grasping it, right? So in the last video that I did regarding spiritual spouses and masturbation and all that, right, I shared how the Lord kind of took me on this journey um, over the past year, year or so, and then um, even just this past summer, you know, um, took me kind of deeper in, in that journey of, so I, I, I blah, blah, blah. I'm going to use that as an example, and then I'm going to use something even more recent as an example. So, I used to masturbate, right? I used to look at porn, masturbate, blah, 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 like most people do, right? Or have. And, you know, I got to the point, like, two summers ago that I was like, you know, I'm really fed up with this. Like, because I, I knew that it was a sin. I, you know, God had already taken me through that, like, part of the journey of, like, comprehending and grasping and, and coming to the realization that it is sin and this, that, and the other. And, you know, um, at that time I was going to Splunkness sessions, and so I went to the Splunkness session, and, um, and I, I had a dream beforehand. I, I've shared all this with you guys before, but just in case someone's, this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, I'm just going to go over it real quick. Um, I had a dream, and in the dream there was two scorpions that were on, like, the back of the car, and they jumped off the car, and then I went into my Splunkness session, um, which, um, Splunkna, for those of you who don't know, is a deliverance integration ministry, um, although I have my qualms with it, and that's all in older videos. Um, and in, in my next session, I was delivered of the afflicting spirits of lust and masturbation. And, but what I found um, within a few months was that I backslid, or, you know, I, I, I was participating in that behavior again. And I was like, well, wait a minute, I thought I was delivered of this, you know? And, you know, I wasn't doing it as frequently or, you know, whatever, but I was still doing it. And, um, and then this past summer um, of, of 2020, I began to kind of like wrestle with this. And I, I was entertaining this ra this supposed rationale that, well, um, you know, like, why, why is it still tempting to me? Why am I still doing it? Why am I tempted to do it? Da -da -da -da. If I'm delivered, sh shouldn't I like be immune to that or, you know, whatever, right? And... I was entertaining this rationale that, okay, um, earlier in my life, I had experienced uh, sleep paralysis. And let me, real quick, for those of you who don't know what sleep paralysis is, that's when you are attacked um, by evil entities while you're sleeping. Um, at one point, well, the first time it ever happened to me, it actually whispered my name in my ear. It grabbed me. At one uh, one time, it was laying back to back in bed with me. Just and and it paralyzes you. You can't scream or whatever. You can't move. Um, and the name of Jesus, you know, I I rebuked it in the name of Jesus, and it was gone. And that was that. And so regarding this masturbation issue this su this past summer, I was like, well, wait a minute. Why is it that? you know, I can't just rebuke it in the name of Jesus and it goes away. Like, why am I still tempted? Why does it, you know, why is this, why does this seem to still be a difficult matter, you know? And so I was, you know, having this, this wrestling conversation with God of like, well, if I have to do this completely in my own will and my own strength, you know, then what do I need you for? Right? Like, like I was just, you know, like, let, let's be honest. Right. So like, if, if, if the name of Jesus wasn't going to make me stop masturbating, then why, why do I need Jesus, right? And I knew that that was, you know, that there was something off in that train of thought, right? And long story short, as I shared in my, my, my previous video, you know, um, what the Lord showed me is that, um, and, and he punctuated this after I made that video, but there is a difference, there's a distinction between being afflicted with, you know, from evil spirits with a temptation and just your own sin, okay? There's a difference here. And, um, and obviously I felt led to punctuate this, hence I'm making this video. Um, so another example that I want to give you, okay? So now any of you who've been around on, on my channel for a bit, you are, you know that I've mentioned my ex, right? So my ex, there's two X, I have a lot of X's, but the two X's that I talk about is my ex-husband and then my ex. And when I say my ex, I mean um, the, the, the person that I've been in and out of communication with like the last six years that I've been here in Colorado. Um, and um, 
without getting into details, that he has been evil in, in my life in, in many ways, and the Lord has um, showed me and flat out told me many times to close the door. Um, in fact, roughly a year ago last autumn, I had a dream where God scolded me and flat out told me, close the door, lock it, and turn around, right? And um, so my personal predicament is, you know, I come from a really screwed up family. My parents were divorced when I was two. They both remarried and had kids and I've never really belonged anywhere and I've never really had a support system. That's been like the, the bane of my existence is that I've never really had a substantial, consistent, long-lasting, permanent um, support system. People have come and gone here and there and been there for me here and there, blah, blah, blah. But overall, that is the one thing I've been lacking like pretty much my entire life. And so that has driven me toward making bad decisions and, and whatnot and, and toward bad situations and circumstances and relationships and so on and so forth. And, you know, over the years, I've wisened up and I've learned and, you know, I've stopped doing certain things and whatever. But so my ex, right? So like, even though he has done all these horrible things and blah, 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 because I have no one else to go to, I end up resorting to going to him, even though I've cut him off a million times. Like literally, I, I, I have his phone number blocked. I have his email blocked, right? Like, but then like, it, it'll get to the point where like something will happen or I'll be struggling with something or whatever on like an emotional level, usually. Um, and I'll break down and I'll call him. And, you know, and then, like, him and I will be in touch. I mean, each time it kind of varies, but, like, you know, we'll be in communication, and then, like, and he's, he needs deliverance. He has a lot of demons and whatnot, and so, like, at some point his demons will start kind of manifesting, and I'll be reminded of all the bad stuff that has happened, and I won't want to deal with it, and then I'll be like, you know what, I know, I know that I know that I know that God told me to shut this door, so I'm gonna block, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off again, and then I stop talking to him again, but then later on, at some point, something triggers me, something happens, and I justify going back to him. Now, him and I haven't been, you know, like, romantically involved for years. It's just been this, like, cycle this like this pattern of like I cut him off and then I resort back to him and then I cut him off and then I resort back to him right and some of you out there may have the same situation I'm sure I'm not the only one um but I'm the one who goes to him and I justify it and then I get pissed off at God and I'm like well God I would stop going to him if you would just open some other doors to some other people right like and um and so I, I blame God you know, that, well, God, like, you know, God, why haven't you just provided me with, with the right people, you know, friends or husband or, or whatever, right? And I get mad at God. And it's very easy to slip back into that, that rationale. Um, but what the Lord has punctuated today is that just like how I had to realize and comprehend in my heart that I have to repent, I have to stop doing whatever it is. Sin is anything not rooted in faith, right? So if God told me, so, so if I realize, if God has brought me to the realization that masturbating is a sin, and if God has told me, you know, on top of it being common sense to step away from my ex, to close that door permanently, and I'm not doing it, right? If, if God tells you to do something or not do something and you do the opposite, that's disobedience, right? That's a lack of faith. It's a lack of trusting him, right? That's sin. And what is, you know, sin requires, re yeah, I'm stuttering. Sin requires repentance. So just like I realized it finally clicked in my heart that, okay, I just have to stop masturbating. I have to just stop period, right? It's the same thing with my ex. Like, I have to just stop contacting him. I have to stop reopening that door. Um, okay. It's one thing to be delivered from certain demons, spirits, and, and whatever, but there's another part of it. There's another facet of just your free will, your rationale of, are you justifying participating in something? Are you justifying doing something or not doing something when you know that what you should do is the opposite? So, okay, so let's jump to James chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him who knows 
to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin, right? So again, it, it's this concept of like not only is anything that's not rooted in faith and trust in God sin, but when you know that you should or shouldn't be doing something and you're not doing it, that's sin because it still ties into how you're not trusting God, right? And none of us likes to admit this to ourselves, right? Like we have to kind of come to this conclusion and we may have to bang our heads against the wall or go around the mountain, right? 40 years in the desert, right? Um, so like this, this, this past weekend, um, you know, like I was already in communication with my ex and, um, you know, all this stuff came out about EMPs and, you know, people not having heat this winter and blah, blah, blah. And I have a fireplace. And so I called him up and I'm like, Hey, why don't you come out to the mountains with me and we'll go, you know, try to get some firewood or whatever. Right. And then as we're trying to figure out logistics, cause he lives a, a good distance from me and he doesn't drive and whatever, like as we're having this conversation, not just like that subtle lack of peace that us seasoned Christians can can kind of tune into. It wasn't just like a subtle lack of peace. It was like this like, I don't know how to describe it. Like this like heavy agitation, you know? And I got to the point in the conversation where I was like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have invited you. Like, I shouldn't even be talking to you. And like, we both know this. Like, he knows. He knows that God has told me a million times to stop talking to him. And I, and I just had to, I had to, like, end the conversation. I had to, like, I had to cut him off. I had to, and, and I'm going to stick to it this time, hopefully. <laughs> um, like, that's, it, it just gets to a point where, like, God is merciful enough that if you keep going around the same mountain enough, like, eventually he'll start, um, like, to a certain extent, God will kind of tell you and then he won't tell you anymore, but he'll also have the mercy to like give you that lack of peace, like to the, to the intensity that like I was agitated, like in this phone call, like my ex wasn't even doing anything wrong. He wasn't, he was trying to compromise and work with me and whatever. And I was the one that was all just like, nah, you know, like I was all agitated and why it wasn't because of anything he said. It wasn't because of anything we were discussing or it was just because I know in my spirit that I'm being disobedient. I know in my spirit that I'm not operating in faith, that I'm not trusting God, that if I just leave this door closed, he will open other doors. And what's funny is a couple months ago, he revealed to me and has even recently confirmed who my future husband is. It's like Jesus is standing here with the open door going, April, as soon as you just keep that door closed, you can walk through this one over here right? And like, we don't even necessarily connect all these things together. We have to connect all these things together. Um, but back to the point, okay? Affliction versus sin, okay? You know, people can, people love to blame the enemy for stuff and, and even blame God for stuff. And as I just shared, I've been guilty of that, you know? I've been in this like chess mass, the chess match with God and I'm like, well, God, if you would just bring me someone new, then I would let go of this person, you know? And God's like, no, you let go of that person first, and then I'll give you someone, you know? Like, and sometimes that's that's what God does with us. Sometimes is like, and because like that's the um, that's the risk that that's the the step of faith, you know? It's like, because if I permanently keep the door closed to my ex, then I'm risking being alone. I'm risking having no one to talk to, no one to cry to, no one to vent to, no one to pray with, you know, whatever it is, no one to help me move, right? Like on like practical levels, no one to help me fix stupid things on my car, whatever it is, right? Like I'm leaving myself at risk for that. And that, that is the space where you have the opportunity to trust God or not trust God, right? And so what I've been doing for the like for literally years now I'm embarrassed to say is it's like yeah I'll sit in that space for a while until like the pressure comes until the the fire comes until the something triggers me and then I go backwards right and you know it's funny because all the prophets and pastors and everybody right now everyone's talking about when the Egyptians were delivered out of Egypt from Pharaoh right and they were there in between 
the old place of Egypt of slavery and bondage and the uh, Red Sea, right? And so that was the place where they had the opportunity to trust God or not trust God. And like God is showing me that, that, that this thing with my ex that I've been stuck in. And you know, it's so funny because like, I've gotten frustrated with it. I've gotten like sick of it. Like I don't like being stuck in this cycle. And I've I've cried out to God and I'm like, Lord, please like just get me out of this cycle. I don't even want to talk to him anymore. The only reason I talk to him is because I have no one else and da, da 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 But like I keep blaming God instead of owning the responsibility and God is patiently waiting for me to just own it of like, okay, I have so many reasons to close this door on top of the fact that God has told me to you know, I need to just let myself stay in that crucible or whatever you want to call it, that place of risk, that place of, you know, trusting God without blaming God, you know, and just wait on him. And, you know, this is something that as you evolve and mature as a Christian, the Lord will take you into like deeper and deeper levels of all these things. And just when you think like you can't go any deeper with God, oh, you can. <laughs> he will show you. He will show you that you can. Um, okay, so yes, the Egyptians were delivered from Pharaoh, right? They were. Like the affliction of someone, you know, holding them as slaves was done away with. They were free. They were technically free, right? It's the same thing with like me and the masturbation, me and my ex, right? Like I've cut my soul ties to my ex. I have done everything I know to do. Like years ago when I first um, came to Colorado and I was in like a, my life was kind of in, in like crisis. Um, I made an agreement that like, oh, he was the best I was ever going to do. Like I had to renounce that agreement. Like I've done everything I know to do to like cut things on, in, the, in the spiritual realm regarding my ex. I'm free of him. I'm delivered of him, right? Just like the Egyptians were delivered of Pharaoh. But there is still a, a, a part, there is still a piece of responsibility that we have to own, okay? There is still this responsibility of, are we going to go backwards or not? Are we going to look back like like uh, Lot's wife, right? Are we going to, you know, settle and, and resort and, and go backwards? Or are we going to stay still and wait on God and put our trust and faith in God? Um, and not blame God and not justify going backwards, right? Because that's what I was doing, right? I was justifying going back to masturbation. I was justifying going back to my ex, and God's looking at me basically saying, I've set you free already, but are you ready to move forward? Are you going to show me and prove to me and the enemy and whatever else is involved, are you going to prove that you want to move forward instead of backwards, right? So you can be set free, you can be delivered of something that has been or was afflicting you, but then you are put in a position whether as to whether or not you're going to sin or not. Are you going to sin or are you going to have faith? Or, or let me let me phrase that differently. Are you going to act in sin or are you going to act in faith? Okay? I got to the point in my heart regarding masturbation that when the devil came at me while I was sleeping in my dreams, I actually yelled at the devil and I was like, no devil, I'm done with this. I'm done with sexual sin. I'm done masturbating. I'm done, done, done. I am done, right? You have to get to that point in your heart where you are that resolved, that you have that resolve of I am done, period. And like, I can tell you from my own personal experience, there's like levels to getting to that point. Like, cause like, over the past year, I, I and, and honestly, regarding my ex, like, pfft, the past several years, like, with each of these issues, right, like, masturbation, my ex, right, like, I got to the point several times where I truly, I, I would have sworn up and down that I, I was resolved, but, again, the Lord will show you that there's, there's deeper levels to go to, um, it really is a, a free will thing. It, it really is a, to use a, a secular phrase, you know, like mind o over, over matter. You know, like, it really is. Like, you have to get to that point in your heart, not just your intellect, in your heart where you are 
done, where in your heart, your true heart posture is repentance, that you are turning around and you are done with that thing, whatever it is, okay? That's what you have to get to that point of. And, you know, for me specifically regarding my ex, like, what clicked in my head finally or my heart finally today was like, just like the masturbation where there's spiritual spouses involved and that can prevent me from being united with my future spouse and my future and the future ministry that God has for me and da 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 da, da. It's the same thing with my ex. Like as long as I keep reopening that door, you think God's going to bring me my, my husband? Like, duh, right? So... I hope this made sense. I hope I'm driving the point home. There is a difference between being afflicted and your own sin. There's a difference. And you can be delivered from whatever's afflicting you and you can still sin and go back to that thing and be deceived that, oh, I'm, I'm being afflicted again. No, no, you're not. You're just going back to your vomit, right? That, that verse in, in Proverbs, that a dog goes back to, his, to its vomit. That's really what it is, plain and simple. And until you're ready to, like, face that, until you're ready to confess that and admit that, and, you know, you're, whatever you're stuck in, whatever cycle, whatever pattern, whatever sin, whatever it is that you're stuck in, you're, you know, odds are you're, that, that you're probably going to stay stuck there until you own it and say, okay, I'm the one choosing to do X, Y, Z, and I have to choose not to. And, you know, you may need to, you know, do whatever it takes. If you got to put on worship music, if you got to, I mean, like, there's, there's a channel on YouTube that I just recently subscribed to, and, um, the Lord opened a door there. She said she had a personal word for me, and so we exchanged email addresses, and we ended up having a phone call today, and she offered, she said, you know, um, if you want to keep my phone number, you know, like she, she made it okay that like, if I'm, if I find myself in that like moment of temptation where like, I want to call my ex cause I have no one else to call, I can call her, you know, like where there's a will, there's a way. And if you show God that you like, you really want to be rid of something like he will start opening doors, but you have to recognize them as, as well. You know, he'll start opening up like resources and whatever. Um, but bottom line you have to just repent. You have to repent and you have to, um, you know, God will let you kind of sit in that in-between spot for a while. He will, because that's how your faith will get strengthened. Um, it's how your endurance and your patience and, and perseverance and persistence and all of that will get strengthened. Um, oh, yeah, and it's kind of funny. Kay Nash, her video today was about how persistence brings your your breakthrough or your, your promised land or whatever. Um, and, I, and, like, I was like, that is so appropriate timing, you know. Um, and that's also the point that, that this lady made on, on the phone today of just, like, you know, it's like just when you get to that point where, like, you're about to give in and you're about to go backwards, you're about to resort backwards, you know, look backwards, act backwards, whatever, like, it's in that moment that if you would just hold on a little bit longer, your breakthrough is probably, like, right around the corner, you know, it, it, it's, like, it's like right there, you know, and that's the message that God kind of gave me, and it all kind of, all these different things are coming together, and I'm like, yeah, if I would just resolve, like, once and for all, in finality, to keep this door shut to my ex, I bet you my future husband will walk right in t t to my life, you know, like, um, so, and, and, and that's what Paul means when he talks about, you know, look forward, strive ahead, you know, think on things that are excellent and, and lovely, you know, like just focus, just focus on forward, Fo focus on forward, Fo focus on forward, stop looking backwards and stop justifying backwards and, um, and stop blaming God, <laughs> you know, like we all do this, you know, like at one point or another, we, we all do it of like, well, God, if you would just blah, 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 then, you know, and like, when we do that, we're not owning the responsibility of our free will. We're not owning it. And that's what we have to do. And that's part of maturing as, as, as a Christian. So I hope I've made my point that I, that I wanted to make. Like, I feel like, I feel like I'm just like stating the obvious, but you know, just like a lot of other people on YouTube that are, you know, having, um, 
ministries, you know, like that's what we need. That's what human beings need. If you read the Old Testament, the Old Testament proves how human beings, like they forget what they know, like so quickly. And it also takes, you know, um, my old friend Ian used to quote this all the time, but I forget he, he used to quote how many times it took to form a habit or, and, and then how many times it took to break a habit or whatever. But like, you know, in order for something to, to shift from like your intellect to your heart, I think you have to like come in, in contact with that concept or, or whatever, like several, like many, many, many times before it finally like shifts and sinks in. And so, um, even though I know this is like common sense kind of stuff, we need to hear it. We need to be reminded of it because the next time you hear it might be the time that it finally clicks and shifts from your intellect to your heart, you know? So I hope I am planting a seed or watering a seed or maybe even, you know, maybe I'm that final, you know, I don't know, watering that finally produces the, uh, the fruit. Um, but I feel like, like, I, I've had enough of this, you know, like, I, I've had enough of being stuck. I want to move forward, you know, we're about to enter the tribulation, like, I want to move forward, like, if, if there's any possibility of me having any kind of just happiness, like, this this little time period at all of, like, being happy with, 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 with a godly husband before all the crap hits the fan, I want that, so I'm done, like, I'm closing doors, I'm ready to, to move forward and I really encourage you guys to do the same. If there's anything that you're stuck in, if there's any kind of cycle or pattern or whatever that you're stuck in, I hope this video helps you. Um, we have to own our free will. We have to own our free will. We have, like, that's what walking by faith is, is we have to just, even though we know that we could sit here and justify it, we could sit here and blame God. We could blame the devil, we could blame other people, but we got to just own it. We got to own it and just say, nope, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I am looking forward and I am acting forward and I am, I'm speaking for, I'm doing everything forward, not backwards, right? <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, hope this made sense <laughs> and I hope this helped at least one person. All right. I bless you all in Jesus' name.